begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And how you guys doing? It's Monday. Yes, it's a dreaded Monday. Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem's here to give you the news, though. That should cheer you up. How's everybody that's uh, at work right now? Or how about everybody that's in the car driving to work over on Spotify and iTunes Radio? Yesterday's Bring It to the Table was pretty cool, man. Had a lot of people in there. I have to say thanks for all the uh, Cash App donations as well as the Super Chat and PayPal. That is really appreciated, especially uh, what some of us creators are facing right now over on that platform. If you want to help by dropping a couple bucks, you can do it through our Cash App. It's at Motorcycle Madhouse. That's that dollar sign thing. And also, uh, right here on the YouTube chat live, man, you can do it, or topfuel at gmail.com on PayPal. Every cent that uh, you donate goes right back into the show, getting equipment ready and all that good stuff for next year, covering some rallies. So anything you can do that uh, you can afford helps us out. Uh, You know what? It's very interesting. I had somebody ask me what some of my favorite memories were uh, back in the day. And, you know, I hate going backwards. Well, what am I talking about? I talk about it all the time because of the state of what I see as I do the biker news every day, uh, (laughs) all week long, man. And I have to say that I've had a couple of favorite memories. You know, memories are made when you, you get to hang around great people and you party, you bleed with them, you cry with them. So that's one part of the community I really like, man. Bikers are so close-knit, and it doesn't matter club this or club that. You know, when it all comes together, we all have a love for motorcycles. But, you know, one of my uh, favorite things was I used to have a couple guys that were in a club uh, before I was piston and stuff. And we all lived in the same apartment complex. Everybody in the club lived there. And you're talking about a 24-hour party seven days a week, man. Uh, that was it right there. We all used to... It's awesome. There's a creek, or a creek uh, behind the apartment building. We used to go out there, get a steel barrel, put a couple holes in the sucker, light up freaking uh, the fire... Stand by the barrel, because in, you know, Chicago area, that's the thing, is the steel barrels. Used to just get high as hell, drunk as hell. That's when I was actually drinking. That's before the day that Jack Daniels beat my ass. Uh, yeah, 97, that dude kicked my ass all over the place, and I haven't drunk since. So, but, uh, yeah, we used to have freaking parties out there all the freaking time. You can actually see a picture if you go over to my Amazon author uh, page. I have a picture of one of those times that uh, we we're just sitting back. You to tell I was high as hell, had uh, you know long hair, all that good stuff. But that was one of the fun times, man. It was that right there is what was the epitome of the lifestyle to me because we was always on the bikes. It didn't matter if it was snow or any of that stuff. We were riding. Uh, of course, the women. We had the women all over all the friggin' time, man. Uh, old Hollywood got himself in trouble because of them women, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, then, of course, going to the bars. You know, we were young freaking kids in our 20s. And it was just nothing better, man. It was nothing better than to just spend time with each other. 
Uh, but that creek will always be a memory to me, man, because it was like every friggin' night, man. Uh, you know, most of us were uh, self-employed, if you will, uh, and uh, we're making our money. And, you know, we had time just to spend a lot of time together, man. Uh, so it was really cool having them parties out there. The apartment complex didn't bug us at all. Uh, they probably afraid, uh, you know, allegedly a brick or something to go through their window. I don't know. It's allegedly from what I know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the trains warm by the freight trains. It was something special, man, back then. Uh, it was, uh, 93 or 94 or something like that, uh, when all that was going down. And then, of course, you know, all the mix-ups and the bars and stuff like that, you know, chase and tail. <sighs> Whew. I wish I was 20-something years old again, man. Now, you know, just the other day, I don't know who I was telling, China Dow or something like that. Man, I'm going on 47 next month, and it feels like I'm like 60 years old, man. And I remember at a time uh, with the Graybeards, they, and I was in my 20s, they used to tell me, man, you need to calm it down, you need to chill out, bring it down a level, notch it down. And, you know, you're going to feel it as you get older. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. You know how kids are. They're stupid, dumb, full of cum and all that stuff. And now I wish I really had listened, man. The knees, you get the arthritis going. It's like, man, if you ever get in a fight, it's just pull out my freaking 357 snub nose and just shoot the son of a bitch because I don't got time for all that fighting and stuff and mixing it up like I used to. And those are also part of the memories, man. The good old bar fights. You know, back then, nobody pulled the guns out and stuff, man. It was, you know, fist to fist. And, uh, you know, you got your ass kicked, you get up and have a beer with the guy. You know, that's just the way things used to be. Not so much anymore, man. You can't get in the damn fight without freaking guns being pulled or knives or any of that stuff. There's never any good boxing matches anymore in a bar fight. Never. It's always all oh, you got to go to this extreme and, you know, you come back with the violence. And I think that really turns off a lot of people. I know during the uh, bring it to the table uh, live session. And by the way, that's uh, Sundays at six. I'm going to do those uh, for a few weeks, see how they go and all that good stuff. But, you know, that's one thing that a lot of people were talking about was, you know, some of the actions of some organizations, they bring the heat down on everybody else. And before, I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Everybody knows how it goes. And then you start, you know, sitting back, looking at both angles of everything. It's like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> you know, like that one story that we uh, covered uh, with the Ditos. Uh, what was it? Hold on a second. My damn uh, earphones here are sucking. You gotta love these damn Chinese or Japanese freaking things. Behringer's used to be real freaking good. But anyway, uh, right after we showed that video, and we got a ton of freaking feedback from it because, you know, a lot of people in uh, the media didn't cover that or probably didn't get a hold of it. But I guess the no color sign went up after that incident, and... You sit back and you said, well, great, uh, you know, it's going to affect hog, it's going to affect A-bait, riding clubs, other clubs, because of that incident. And from what I'm hearing, a lot of places down in that area in Texas are going no colors policies anymore, uh, because they don't want that stuff in their establishment. So, you know, you got to really think about what's going on and how you handle your business in the public. Me, I really, uh, you know, it don't concern me, and I ain't in a club, so it don't affect me much. But uh, it does affect other people, and when it affects other people, that sucks, especially when you're asking people to give you a hand, help you out with uh, the profiling stuff, and then that happens, and everybody gets really freaking pissed off. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, I one of these days, I'm actually going to freaking uh, put up some of the emails I get. You know, I'm going to try to take off. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out because I use OBS and figure out how to uh, put it up on the screen. That way you guys can uh, see some of the stuff I have to freaking deal with. 
You think you got it bad. Me, who? You know what? If I don't piss off one side, I piss off the other. If I don't piss off that one, I piss somebody else off. It's like, damn, man, nobody can be happy. But, hey, that's such uh, is the new business. Uh, so let's get into uh, some of the news. I just want to answer uh, that question as far as, you know, some of my memories and stuff. Also, uh, this uh, Monday, tonight, uh, we're going to be uh, doing over at the Hollywood and China Dows, uh channel. Uh, how to survive a sexless marriage, man. Could you imagine not getting you any? You know, some people go, you know, maybe one or two uh, times a year is all they get. And the rest of the years, they're using their palm of their hands. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. So we're going to be covering that one. Uh, uh, some of the past videos and chats that we had on episodes over at Hollywood and China Doll had everything to do with uh, how to talk your girlfriend into a threesome, how to give blowjob. It's just crazy over there, man. They kill me over there, especially with the lives. So let's get into uh, the biker news, shall we? Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Okay, here we go. Fox 35 Orlando. Fight at a motorcycle club ends with three people shot dead, one injured. Sad state of affairs. Let's take a listen. And tonight, three people are dead, one person injured after a quadruple shooting in Orange County. Deputies say it all started with a fight outside of a motorcycle club. Fox 35 Sydney Cameron has the latest in the investigation. Orange County deputies searching for at least one suspect after a quadruple shooting at this warehouse off North Forsyth Road. The sheriff saying the one person who did survive is not talking to deputies. That person who is going to survive, it's just a, it's a, a non-life threatening injury. Uh, we're wanting to uh, talk to him and uh, have him shed some more light on this, but he's being uncooperative. Leaving deputies to rely on witnesses and evidence to find out who shot three people to death early Friday morning at a motorcycle club housed in this warehouse. I'm told like there's a bar and a pool table in there and uh, a club where you know people from this club come and hang out. Orange County Sheriff John Mina saying there was a big crowd outside just before 2 a.m. when there was an argument over a motorcycle. We just know that there were multiple shots fired. Uh, there was possibly more than one shooter. SWAT personnel arriving on scene Friday morning to clear the building as a precaution. The sheriff saying this shooting is an isolated incident. This has nothing to do with any of the gang activity and violence, targeted violence that has been on the west side of Orlando. Deputies will also be looking at video surveillance to see if there are any leads there. Reporting in Orange County, Sydney Cameron, Fox 35 News. Uh, I do not know what club is involved in this or clubs. Uh, all I know is something like this don't look good in the media because it affects, like I've always said, man, it affects citizens' freaking viewpoints of clubs. You know, they see this kind of stuff. Next thing you know, all clubs do this stuff, and everybody that's a club member does this kind of stuff. You know the story, man. I preached it for the last two years and stuff. Uh, you know, it was in Orange County and they were arriving on the scenes, uh, according to what this was. And then they got a lot more video on it, but again, they did not name the clubs, but, uh, this was uh, a couple days ago. It was, I think Friday or something. And uh, of course we're Monday through Friday on the news. So, and again, nothing has come out on this as far as, uh, what clubs are. But it is kind of uh, sad that three people lost their lives. And, you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, the days of going fisticuffs are all over, man. It's nothing but shooting and, you know, knives that get stupid nowadays. And that's one thing that has really changed, man. It used to be just fisticuffs and all that good stuff. But now it's not, man. Now it's not. Uh, now, uh, bikers are descending on Daytona Beach for Biker Fest. Yes, it is going on down there. And this from uh, the Biker Dad. Well, it's on his site, but CBS News uh, 
path is covering it. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah, here in Daytona Beach, bikers from all over are beginning to make their way here to Volusia County for Biketoberfest. We checked out Main Street tonight, and we spoke to an entrepreneur who says he's hopeful this weekend brings in so much needed revenue. Patrick Baker says he leases several parking lots near Main Street in Daytona Beach. He says on a typical year, he brings in about $120,000 from parking fees, but says this year he's only brought in about $40,000, adding he's several months behind on bills. I'm hoping that we, we do well, that we have to do well. After my cost expenses, I hope me and my wife get about $1,500, That's what we're well, hoping. On the eve of Biketoberfest 2020, Baker says he's pleased to see bikers lining the streets. Last month, the Daytona Beach City Council voted not to issue permits for the event over safety concerns related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Baker says this parking lot would typically be permitted for tents, but that's not allowed within city limits. However, Volusia County is allowing for event permits in unincorporated areas. The city of Ormond Beach is also allowing for permits. Baker says he's hoping for a busy weekend. I want my people to get some money. That's the main deal, get, to get my employees paid. Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood also tells me he will have extra deputies patrolling and monitoring the crowds around Biketoberfest. Daytona Beach Police Chief Craig Capri also tells me he will be out on Main Street tomorrow, which is also when the event officially kicks off. In Daytona Beach, Troy Campbell, Getting Results News 6. You know what, that's uh, been going on all summer long with uh, all these rallies being canceled because of COVID. You know, a, a buddy of mine, he's actually in the hospital right now on a ventilator. The COVID-19 ain't uh, just the flu. It ain't a cold. Like you'll, you'll, you'll see people come out and say, well, I had it. It ain't this and that. Well, you might have not have had an underlying condition, but I think we got to find a median here where, you know, we got to protect ourselves against the COVID, but at the same time, you got to go on with your life. That's just the viewpoint I'm taking on it because, you know, I seen him. He's on a ventilator. He's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a lifter, man. He weight lifts and stuff and healthy. And next thing you know, this thing kicked him in the ass, man. And, you know, he's still uh, going through this stuff. Hopefully he uh, makes it out. But, you know, a lot of people are losing a ton of money. The rallies, they usually bring in tens of thousands, hundred thousands of dollars. They're not happening. People ain't getting paid. You know, so hopefully one of these days we'd find a ha you know, happy medium and uh, hopefully a damn vaccine does come out. So we just start going back to normal in our lives. You know, you don't even want to know what I think of the COVID. I think it was released uh, on purpose, but hey. It's here now, and it's really affecting a lot of lives. J right now, in my area, they wanted to uh, put bars outside. You can't have them inside. You know, restaurants. It's like, you know, these politicians sit up in their mansions because, you know, every one of them makes millions of dollars on a $100,000 a year job because they're corrupt as hell. Uh but they're living the life. Why us peons out here are freaking suffering and then our small businesses are closing. It's just freaking uh, ridiculous if you ask me. Uh, Daytona Biker or Biketoberfest is usually a kick-ass thing. I've only been down there during Daytona Bike Week. But I mostly hung out in Ocala and stuff because I liked it outside of the city limits. I don't like being around all those people. Uh, but hopefully stuff gets under control again. Uh, let's go to NBC29.com, former Shenandoah Harley-Davidson dealership owner to host Freedom Relief Ride. And this had to do uh, with that dealership that got its license or its dealership pulled or whatever the hell you want to call it uh, because of BLM uh, stuff that they didn't like. But that's Harley-Davidson, and we've seen what they did with the million-dollar one. Uh, you know, they just got, they're just freaking too politically correct now. And you know what? I hope it bites them in the ass, uh, by Simone McKenney this weekend. Bob Ladd is putting the old Harley Davidson dealership building outside of Staunton to use by hosting his freedom relief ride to raise money for charity. This will be the 12th freedom ride put on, uh, by the former Harley Davidson dealer Ladd did them, uh, just about every year until he sold his dealership. 
Lance said he's the his uh he's most excited to see everyone again. Quote I haven't seen a lot of these people for nine years. Lad said, for the most part, festival is going to take place outside with live music, food, and other activities. I can pick them easily, but I want to have them in the say. The whole business was built that way. Lad said, everyone is required to bring a mask, and uh, the more than 13 acres uh, will leave plenty of room. Now that the building is no longer a Harley-Davidson uh, dealership, Lad said he has uh, a new business venture in the work. Lad said the new sign for the building will be unveiled. Now, I do got to correct myself. Uh, maybe this isn't uh, the Harley dealership that got closed down. You know, if it isn't, my mistake, I always say when I'm wrong. So, because I would imagine that this article would have... Uh, uh, mentioned uh the former owner with the blm comments and stuff but it doesn't look like this is the case so my bad if i got it wrong on that one now biker dad uh, bikers for trump brings an estimated 800 riders to orange beach california that's a lot man uh right now on youtube we're watching them uh drive on by they got all their uh trump signs the whole nine yards but it looks like they had a damn good turnout and i hate to get political man but uh you vote in that freaking empty vessel of biden you're freaking really gonna hurt yourselves this country uh but that's about as political i'm gonna get right now now this was the the main story i wanted to cover because i almost freaking uh laugh and then you have to say well wait a second uh you know what they got a point here and this one from roadtrack.com uh, the harley davidson live wire is great you know personally i don't think it's great i think zero has the better products but the charging uh, infrastructure is not now i was talking about that on our live bring it to the tape episode about Give it about 20 years, the infrastructure will get there, then uh, electric, full electric cars and bikes. You'll probably see them all over the damn place. But you got to get the infrastructure first. And these companies shouldn't have invested in that. You, you know, they should have done that before they started all these unveils. You know, you should have Harley Davidson out there getting these charging station uh things ready because they're not only going to make money on the bike they're going to make money like a gas station would but for electricity polaris honda all them should be out there doing building the infrastructure first harley uh, they go on to say harley's electric motorcycle is brilliant but it's going to take a while for american charging systems to catch up it's one thing to be let down by disappointing product that doesn't meet expectations it's much worse when a good thing so they claim, like Harley-Davidson's Livewire electric motorcycle has failed by bad infrastructure. Personally, you know what, you can't blame it on the infrastructure at the Livewire's angle because they freaking marketed it towards the Urban Rider. You know, it only has 100 freaking miles on it. And how the hell would you, you know, that's like driving a Sporty around with a two and a half on it. Every 100 miles, you're freaking stopping. And then what? You got to wait eight hours or something for that damn battery to freaking charge up? But, you know, that was an infrastructure. I really don't believe that because it was marketed to the urban biker. They didn't like the price, and they said, hell with you. The Livewire is a fantastic bike. That's where I disagree. It offers a unique and exciting riding experience that can't be matched by internal combustion alternatives kidding right i just had to say that you're kidding right really at no point during my time with the live wire did i wish i was riding a gas powered machine it was only when my ride came to an end that i started having regrets and the author of this uh, piece on road and track .com is uh this is like a a review of what he believes uh with the live wire my intentions were simple i wanted to ride the live wire from my house in the southern catskill region of the new york state to the big city taking the most direct route possible a total distance of about 130 miles on the books the live wire has a 70 mile highway range 
only 70 miles, but owners have seen around 90 miles while averaging 55 to 60. It's just not feasible what it's doing that range. With the direct current fast charging station conveniently located just 86 miles from my home, right on my route to New York City, I figured I'd have a perfect waypoint to stop and let the live wire juice up. Goes on to say there's three ways you can charge it. You can plug it into a normal residential outlet using the included charging cable. You can find a level 2 electric vehicle charging station. And that's what I was talking about is these companies, and I'm not only talking about motorcycles, I'm talking about cars too. Start getting the infrastructure going together, getting these charging stations all over the damn place. Uh, which is typically what EV owners install in their home garages, or you can use a DC fast charger where you pay per minute to plug into a charging dock. Usually located in a retail parking lot, Harley claims both the standard plug and level 2 option take about 12 hours to fully charge. 12 hours. Wow. Who's going to do that after... Uh, not you got to get it to at least three or four hundred. You know, that's about the average for a ride, man. At least at three or four hundred, somebody's going to frickin' bed and you'll have it charged in the morning. In my experience, it took much longer than that. The bike accumulating around 85 to 90 after 12 hours. If you're sorting in any rush, you'll need the fast charger. And he goes on and on and on about his ride and i'm sure you know it might be a good bike man but it's just not feasible with the the mileage you got to get more mileage out of these damn things and uh, you know zero is the one that is on this deal man you know the pay by the minute thing man how much does it ch uh, cost to charge one of these things i really need to look that up right there but, uh, you know, that's uh, Aaron Brown's uh, review. You just see it on RoadTrack.com uh, and uh, see how it works out, man. I just don't believe it's feasible. Now, Corey Graff's wall of shame. Police officer arrested charge for fraudulent attempt to buy firearm in Westchester. Now, uh, you know, I was trying to get a good intro and, uh, you know, a lot of good suggestions. Only problem is... I can play it on the radio, but I can't play it on uh, YouTube because of copyright stuff. They'll take the video right down. So just keeping it this way. Uh, this one out of the Daily Voice. A police officer in Westchester attempted uh, to dece uh, deceive a gun shop owner to fraudulently purchase a firearm despite being disciplined for an off-duty incident. Sanjay Richards. An active duty member of the Yonkers Police Department was arrested and charged with a pair of felonies after he allegedly attempted to fraudulently purchase a weapon at a gun shop in Mount Vernon. Richards, 40, a five-year veteran of the department, surrendered at Yonkers Police Headquarters on Tuesday, October 13th, following an investigation by the department in West Chester's County District Attorney's Office. Yonkers Detective Lieutenant Dean uh, said that the joint investigation determined that on Wednesday, September 30th, Richards entered a gun shop in Mount Vernon and produced a unlawfully altered police identification. It is alleged that uh, Richards concealed the part of the card that displays no, a no firearms restriction in an attempt to deceive the gun shop employee to purchase the handgun said that Richard had been previously placed on modified duty to an off-duty incident in another jurisdiction, and his authority to possess firearms had been revoked. Well, our Yonkers Police Department operates at a level of integrity and transparency that will not be diminished because of reckless behavior of an officer. Seems like uh, they're starting to go after that, uh, the bad officer stuff. That old blue wall stuff might be coming to an end, but hey, who knows?
Let's go to my final thoughts. Chinadal from Hollywood and Chinadal Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Yeah, don't forget to go over and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com on your browser. Get all the biker news that you don't see over here on the show. There's a ton out there, man. Make sure you keep up on what's going on in the scene. And don't forget, uh, Hollywood and China Dow show no issue is too controversial for us over there. You'll have a damn good time, man. It's a different kind of show, and I think you'll get a kick out of it. So make sure you get on over there. Also, thanks for all the donations uh, to our Cash App. You guys are kick ass, man. You guys are really uh, helping out, and uh, really appreciate that. Much love to you, as well as the Super Chats and all that good stuff. My final thoughts. <laughs> what can I say, man, with the first story with uh, the Motorcycle Club incident? At least the guy that got shots keeping quiet. That's the way it used to be. But it is terrible that uh, three people lost their lives over what was going on over there. You know, the old days, like I said, man, fisticuffs, man. Throw some fists, get your ass whooped. Next thing you know, you're having a beer, and there's a lot less freaking problems. You don't have the retaliation. You don't have the law enforcement looking at you. You don't have people serving freaking time, man, because in Florida, they don't screw around. You know, you get caught up on a murder charge. You're lucky not to get the death penalty, but uh, life in prison. And then you got to ask yourself, man, was it really worth it? to do life in prison and you know i'm not trying to bang on anybody's organization but uh you know life in prison you know 30 years from now or 20 years from now even if the club's been around forever are they really gonna remember who the hell you are yeah i know a lot of people a lot of prospects are told they got to write letters and stuff like that but 20 years, you got to think about that. 20 years from now, are the newer cats coming in? Because most of the people you probably knew were gone. Going to really remember your sacrifice you did for the club. You know, it's a legitimate an uh, you know question. And hopefully, you know, there's some answers to that stuff. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comment section. Is it worth doing life over uh, for what's going on out there, man? I say get fisticuffs and uh, go back to the way old things used to be. But, uh, you know, again, I'm not in the club, so it don't affect me. I just do the biker news. Uh, you know, uh, it's good seeing a lot of other stuff out there as far as the news is concerned. Uh, you know, that's the one bad one we had, but, uh, you know, the 800 bikers getting together for what they need to do. And then, uh, that live wire stuff, I'm still, you know what? I don't think it's worth it. Now, uh, you know, well, for one, they were right on the one thing, the infrastructure, but 12 freaking hours. Are you shitting me? No, nah, if you're going to have to go 12 hours, man, you're talking about, you got to get the mileage out of that. Uh, and I think zero with its extended pack, it's fast charge, and you can do it, man. So if you're talking electric, I'm saying go with friggin' zero motorcycles. Go with zero. That's the best. I think it's like half the freaking price is a, a live wire's concern. But if they're going to try to keep pushing that live wires, uh, keep on pushing it, I don't think it's going to help them out anymore with the uh, younger crowd than, you know, their Pan America is with the off-road stuff because the off-road kids don't like Harley Davidson, man. They're into other stuff. And that's, you know, a recurring theme uh, is how the Harley Davidson's going to get the younger crowds. And, you know, I don't think it's possible, man. I think uh, you made your bed and uh, you got to just keep after them friggin' middle-aged ones, man, because they're the ones that uh, can afford your product. Uh, younger kids can't afford your damn product and never will be unless you realize your price point's too high. But, you know, your new CEO wants to push the ZVO line, so, you know, you, you're not going to learn your... Uh, 
lessons. It is what it is. So with that, uh, appreciate you guys uh, coming over to the show. Don't forget to go over to Hollywood and China now. We are also with that show are on iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, all the majors, man. And I really appreciate all the feedback from the radio listeners on the show. It's real cool uh, hearing that everybody's listening to us on work uh, with that, laughing their ass off. I try to keep it different than this show is because this is kind of a serious show. But that one's nothing but fun, man. Yeah, we cover serious uh, subjects over on that. But uh, we try to keep it uh, really funny and real fun. You just got to listen to it uh, live. I think we're going on uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. and then maybe Thursday. It really depends if we go live on China Dow's work schedule. But you'll get a freaking laugh over there, let me tell you. So with that, guys, I'll talk to you later. And appreciate your uh, support, man. You guys have been awesome. 